I mean, look, look at this picture. His name is Akeem Briscoe. The funny, joyful second grader was killed by a stray bullet in his own home. This week, a juvenile is set to stand trial for his murder. Tonight, we begin our 1030 half hour with yeah, that's an a baby, ongoing man. investigation into the troubled juvenile justice system, a system Akeem's mother believes doesn't take into account the victims. CBS 2 investigator Dave Savini is here live as he begins his investigation with Akeem's okay, story. Too. Dave. Chris, the juvenile justice system is complicated, filled with trauma and emotion. How do you balance justice for the victims when it comes to such young offenders? It's a question that will once again be asked this week in court. Easy when you know that they do most of this shit because they know there's no consequences. Bangs. It is also a deeply painful question Akeem's mother is now finally prepared to talk about. Call it a mother's intuition. They told me to go to the police station. I went down there, they told me they can't do nothing. Deidre Misters seemed to know deep down her family could be in danger. I emailed them a year before all this happened, months before all this happened. She tried to get someone to listen. I'm in pain. My kids are in pain. But her unanswered cries for help about her neighbors came at great cost. Her seven-year-old, Akeem, was looking forward to taking a class field trip in the morning. Talked about that trip. <laughs> Talked about that trip. He was already in his pajamas. He did homework. Took a shower. After dinner, she told him to wash his hands when suddenly chaos erupted outside. Everything just happened so fast. It was like pop, 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 pop. Witnesses say a dozen bullets fired in an escalating fight. So I checked him. Oh, I'm like, okay, I don't think he got hit. Then he looked up at me and he was like, mom, I think I got shot. Seven years Somehow, old. Somehow the only person hit was Akeem, a single stray bullet found its way through the family's kitchen window into the bathroom, striking the second grader as he stood by the sink. After he told you he thought he got shot, what happened next? And I looked and I seen the hole in his shirt. So he was shot in the stomach. He was shot in the stomach. Deidre, a nursing assistant, laid on the floor next to him, trying to stop the bleeding. So I just started to hold the pressure on the wound. I didn't realize he had, it went straight through him. And he's still talking to you? He didn't lose conscious right away. He just kept trying to reassure me that he was okay. What was he saying to you? He was saying, I'm going to be okay, mommy. I'm okay, mommy. Those would be the last words she would ever hear from him. He was shot and killed, washing his hands. And for Deidre and her surviving children, it would be their second funeral in two weeks. Her husband, their dad, Akbar Briscoe, had also just died after suffering a stroke. A week after I had to bury my husband, I had to start preparing oh, for a funeral. Oh, man. Fuck. Jeez. Christ, man. My son. What was the date? October 27, 2022. Deidre returned to her old street last month to show us which window the bullet went through. Then something unexpected happened. I think about you all the time. I have a cross in the bathroom. It's really him. The woman now living in the mm. home Marcia Severin saw Deidre and came out to comfort her. I have a candle in the back window. I always think, I just want you to know that, okay? <laughs> Two strangers, both moms, meeting for the first time. <laughs> then Marcia invited Deidre inside <laughs> and gave her space to grieve. <laughs> she then walked to the bathroom <laughs> and saw the sink. He was standing right here. And I was sitting right here next to him. You didn't, you haven't been in this? I haven't been in this house since it happened. What are you thinking and feeling? 
It's like all my emotions of everything from me raising him up into the time that he passed. Just, it all comes back, flutters me. Marcia never met Akeem, but she knew what happened. To memorialize the little boy, she hung a cross in the bathroom, one her own little boy created. He loved everything. He loved everybody. Deidre thinks Akeem would be alive today. She can't get over it. That her earlier complaints about her neighbor and constant gathering of large crowds led to no action. I feel like all this could have been avoided because I complained to my apartment complex. I complained. I emailed them and begged them to come and do pop-up visits on my back. I stopped parking my car in the back of my house. Because she feared for her safety, she stopped parking her car out back. Court records show the shooters were targeting Deidre's neighbor and shooting at him in her parking space. So if the person who they were firing at wouldn't have been in your spot. In my spot. You would have been there. I would have been there. And you don't think the bullet would have gone into your apartment? Then? No. She believes that would have changed the trajectory of that one stray bullet. When we talk about a bullet's path, a few inches this way or a few inches that way and it hits brick. Yes. But in this case, it went through the window. It went straight through the window. That night, if my car had been parked in my parking spot, my son would have got hit. Chicago police and court records show an earlier fight here at a nearby liquor store led to the retaliatory shooting. They came from right Think here about and started that. shooting. This, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's speechless. Like, what do you even fucking... <laughs> you know, the, the, the lowness of the, the baseness of it. I think it can uh, go. You think it can go no further, but it does. I I just can't stand these interviews though. Like this, it's so dumb. It's like, how do you feel? It's like, could it possibly be joy? Maybe. Like, what do you what do you I, even ask? Well, I gotta say, I see real tears on this one, and like, yeah, this is, sad. This is, this is yeah, really this sad. is fucking um, heartbreaking. I, it's crazy how the sun man just know when to get you. Like, if you're either having a great moment in your life or you're fucking low, they know when to get you, but. Anybody with half a brain, I, with a fucking half a brain, knows what should be done to that little son worry. Mm, I mean, so it was it another juvenile that shot him? Yeah. Yeah, he was. He was fifteen My when he car. killed this kid. They, it, it's it's the fact that when you know these little kids too, like I know a bunch of these little kids, not by like just going out, hey, how you doing? But just over the years of living in Blackestan, you know what I'm saying? I know a bunch yeah. of these little kids. Now, some of them are probably grown now, but, you know, like, I've known these kids all my life. They're, they're all the same, like, no matter what year, whether it was 04 or 96 or 1990, I've known these little 15-year-old shooters and bad kids all my life. And I'm telling you, man, they don't lose sleep over this shit. They're shitty it people. Does it bother them like mm. you would think it does? Um, I mean, and, and I wouldn't say shitty people, even. I would say that that's DNA, man. The callousness. Because a shitty person would like you would see like some of them would, it would bother some of them and not others. It don't bother none of them. Yeah. So this kid <laughs> who shot him got It's released. a frontal lobe kid. Yeah, he got released. Um, and then arrested yeah, again. Yeah. Well, well, this was two years ago, right? Um, This story came out, I think yesterday, but this kid was killed two years ago. He was released because he's a jewelry, mm -hmm. I guess. And uh, recently he had court, so he had to go on fest. That's why they brought it up because he went to court like two days ago. However, tonight he was caught in a high speed chase in a stolen car. Think about that. I, mm. you know, I have kids, right? The idea of this scenario occurring would shatter my brain into a million pieces. Hey, listen, she we're seeing her two years after. Like, she's had two years to not, I mean, to just, like, I guess let it kind of subside however much it does. Like, this is, 
this is when I think about these kids and, and having known these kids throughout the years and have gone to school with them, being in programs with them, you know what I'm saying? Just being in the neighborhood with them and just knowing how evil they are. They, they literally get away with murder. It, it makes, it angers you when you see stories like this, because it's so many of them, man. Like, it's so many of these kids. Because I'm just thinking about the ones in the neighborhoods that I lived in. And there's like a hundred neighborhoods in my city. Oh, uh, could you see a Jack boy got arrested in Port St. Lucie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we may get to that a little later. She believes that would have changed the trajectory of that one stray bullet. When we talk about a bullet's path, a few inches this way or a few inches that way, and it hits brick. Yes. But in this case, it went through the window. It went straight through the window. That night, if my car had been parked in my parking spot, my son would have got hit. Chicago police and court records show an earlier fight here at a nearby liquor store led to the retaliatory shooting. They came from right here and started shooting this way. Akeem's death was another in a series of killings we hear about. Children being killed and teens doing the shooting. A 19-year-old, Joseph Serrano, and a 15-year-old are charged in the shooting death of a kid. Wow. So they were on burritos. Goddamn on burritos. I didn't know. I thought it was. Uh, I didn't know they were on burritos, actually. I'm surprised nah, I missed dude. this part. It's on burrito. Unless the other one is a son. I don't know, but do some burritos roll with sons like that in Chicago? Uh, yeah, right in that area, they could. Um, but look, so what's the score? I like one to 40. And then let's think <laughs> about this. The 15-year-old was released and then arrested today in a high-speed carjacking. So I don't know, man. That's that's son to me, but. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And the, and the, the, the silhouette kind of looks like a son, too. <laughs> well, it's like like dreads Matt there. Gilbert. The 15-year-old is being charged as a juvenile which worries Deidre. From everything I gathered, this boy is gonna get five years. My son is sitting in a box. This boy get to be free in five years. If he gets convicted. If, yeah, because he's out right now. The CBS2 investigators obtained these internal Cook County Juvenile Court records a rare look inside a system shrouded in secrecy. From 2011 to 2019, the most recent year tracked, we found a 65% decrease in arrests, dropping from 25,961 down to 8,952. Only about half of those cases in 2019 were recommended for prosecution, and only 5% of Does those Does this juveniles... coincide with the election of um, Kim Fox? When did she come in? Yeah. Uh, I think she came in office like 2016, maybe. Okay, so yeah, she's, she's, I mean, she's, the blood on her hands, my God. You feel the ocean with it. most <laughs> recent year tracked, we found a 65% decrease in arrests, dropping from 25,961 down to 8,952. Only about half of those cases in 2019 were recommended for prosecution, and only 5% of those juveniles were sentenced to serve. Jesus Christ. It's, it's like indirect genocide, basically. I mean, we're talking, you know. A license to kill. That's what War crime is. level. Yeah. I mean, just the inaction is, is criminal. And then you got to hear everywhere you go about the <laughs> prison pipeline. Right. And all the victims. Prison pipeline, um, yeah. unjust, unfair sentences, disparities in sentencing. Yeah, it's the hard community. out here for a black man because of some other group. <laughs> and they're literally doing things to make it easier. Because remember, the last five years has just been remove um making the crim criminal justice reform so they've yeah. reformed it more from 2019 
yeah, yeah. It's just to the you point know, where the average hits some men, whatever you say, whatever they say, you could just fucking straight bet on it being completely the opposite. True. Yeah. The opposite. You, Not you know, live, but the opposite. <laughs> right. You know, I'm just frustrated, I that the Umbrito was involved because he should know better. You know, and you know, there's no excuse. Jesus. Oh my gosh. Think yeah, cut that, that one's heart out. Right, right, to the to the sun guy. <laughs> so that the sun may rise again tomorrow. Serve time. I think a juvenile should be accountable. There should be more laws set in places for them instead of just sending them on their way and giving them a smack on their wrist because they're not learning nothing. She also thinks victims and their families become statistics lost in the system without real justice. I don't think that the justice system is set for people that lose people. I don't get to hug my son, what his life would have been like. My son can't give me grandkids. He can't date. I can't meet his first girlfriend. And then all I have is videos. And I just have a f sneaking suspicion that if it were a glider 15-year-old kid who fucking shot a 7-year-old, uh, he would be being prosecuted pretty strongly. That would, be, yeah. that would be referred. Not only that, if the 7-year-old if the was white, this wouldn't even make the news. <laughs> he wouldn't even give a shit.